Hello and welcome to the Natural Wonders DVD series. This is the fourth part of the series, so let's get stuck in. What I'm going to do, I'm going to be painting a waterfall scene. So the first step that we need to do is prime it with black gesso. So I've got some black gesso out on a plate. I'm just going to use a little one and a quarter inch brush. So I'm just going to tap into that. Get some on the brush. Now, just up in here is where I want the top edge to be. It's going to be a little bit of sky just above that. So I'm just using the brush to create that top edge first. And then it comes right up actually. It's a bit too low. I need it to be a tiny bit higher than it is. Something like that is good. And then that goes right up. Right up there. So we block right into corners with that colour. And then underneath it we can just block that in. There we go. Yeah, we're going to be painting you a, a lovely waterfall scene today. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the type of waterfall that you would get in a rainforest. Somewhere in Peru, somewhere like that. Beautiful lush plants, lovely greens, and all of these beautiful things, the flowers and everything, will all be reflected down into the water. Good. Spray. We're just blocking this in, basically. You could do this Literally with a roller brush. Be a lot quicker with a roller brush as well. <laughs> this is an acrylic primer in black gesso. And it's really good for stuff like this because we'll do this, let it dry, and as soon as it dries within five to ten minutes, once it's dried, you've got it sussed. 5-10 minutes, let it dry, put your linseed oil on and then you're ready to go basically, you're ready to get painting. So this top edge can be changed at any time. This is just a guide for what we're going to be doing. Just want to get plenty of colour on there. Just painting the bottom of this black. So what I'm going to do, I've just got some linseed oil on a plate and I'm just going to Put a tiny amount of that onto a brush and just put a small amount of it, see that? All over the canvas, just a small amount. You don't need a lot of this because when you scrub it in like that, instantly, you can just spread it all over the place and spread it about. You really just got to scrub it in there, really be tough with it. You don't want too much on. If you end up doing too much on, get a paper towel and wipe off the excess paint, uh, the excess linseed oil for them. And you can see, because because it's a primer and it's a matte primer. It's got a dullish effect before you put the linseed oil on. So everywhere where you haven't got linseed oil will look slightly dull, like it does just up there. I'm going to bring it up to the top edge of that. Again, a tiny bit more. A bit of that over there. And what this does, it makes the old canvas slick and wet. Obviously we're painting a wet and wet technique, so we want it to stay slick and wet throughout the whole of the painting. So we're just putting this linseed oil on there. Gives us that slick and wet paint when we actually we're gonna cover this now just with some oil paints. I'm gonna mix up some oil paints and cover it slightly with some of that there. Scrub that in. Somewhere near. Yes. Just check it 
you've not got no little hairs or anything left on there. No, that's looking pretty good. Right, so I'll put that down. I'm just going to tell you a couple of stuff. Before I actually start, I always tap the bristles of my brushes like so because what happens is dust rests on there and then when you start painting all this dust and hairs and stuff start coming off on your painting so it's something to always be aware of now I just want to show you the colours that we've got on the canvas we've got midnight black van dyke brown phthalo blue prussian blue alizarin crimson sap green uh, indian yellow yellow ochre and lemon yellow and then we've got some white over here so before we get started I just need to get a little bit of a liquid white now I've just mixed it with the knife so I'll just use the knife and I'll just put a little bit of liquid white on there where the sky is going to be just, just enough that should be enough and then a one inch brush I'm just going to come in and blend that just over the black I want it to come just over that black you need just enough liquid white on you don't want a lot there you go so you can see it just over that black edge that's good now, I'm going to put that brush down, and in fact I'll use that same brush, I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm not going to be putting no clouds in this sky, so I don't see why it's a problem. I'm just going to use some phthalo blue, tap that in there, good and strong, come up in here, I'm just going to gently blend some of that in, starting with the darker colour at the top, and then allow it to get a bit lighter, lower down. There. Something like that. That's good enough for that stage. And I'm going to get a little bit of Prussian blue, which is a darker blue. Prussian blue is much darker. And then I'm going to use that just in that top edge. Now if I grab myself a clean brush and then just come in on the light area, I can actually blend that really soft. Do some little crisscross strokes when you do this. Blend out all those little lines and stuff. But you want it light on the horizon and then darker higher up. There. Maybe a bit of blue just down in there. So it's still getting lighter, but there's just a, a small amount of blue still on there. Good. All right, so I'm just going to put that down, and then I'm going to go straight into a filbert brush. I'm just going to use phthalo blue, midnight black, and a tiny bit of sap green, but not a lot of sap green. With that, I'm going to push and get a ridge. And then just up in here, I'm going to have some little trees and stuff. Just, just green, just above there. Tiny bit more of the sap green and black with that. Yeah, that's it. Just above where that ridge was. I 
all the way along here we're going to have some trees at the top. Highlight over the top of this later. Now we're going to have a waterfall in this, you see, it's going to be a, a really nice waterfall that comes down here. So. Maybe I'm going to break this up just a tiny little bit. Black and sap green, <laughs> tiny little bit of blue. see that line where the gesso was before so by putting these bits of dark in just gets rid of that now, for this I'm just using straight black and then tapping it into the green same on this side bigger brush probably and paint a bit of a little bit of black just in there. So remember there's two stages I've done. The lighter greens first and then we've got the darks that I've just popped in there. Like I say, all this behind here, just going to be lots and lots of trees. Now, I know that there's going to be quite a bit of mist coming up here, and that's why I'm just going to use a bit more black and green just in there, because I don't want the mist to turn green. that in there, doesn't really matter, just scrub a bit of colour in, I know you can't see this but it's just a bit of black and a bit of sap green. Same at this side, just in there. Right now, I know that where the waterfall is, there's still trees just up behind it. So I'm going to just paint the trees in, but I'm, I'm going to use just the black. Just to, you know, like so. The reason being is that I'm going to put the waterfall in front of this area. So I can, don't want it to mix with the green. So I'm putting that dark on first. A bit of that black. And then I'll have some colour underneath the waterfall. Now what we can do, we can go back to that green that I was using, push and get a ridge, and then just where I've got that thing I can get some green, just put a bit of green above it. There, just in there. A lot of stuff going on up there. That's cool. Now, I'm trying to think which brush I should use, maybe a one inch because it's quite a a decent sized waterfall. 
Now, I'm just going to get some black, smidgen of blue. In fact, I'll go into that green because that will act as a dollar for this. Tiny bit of crimson. Don't forget, there's only a right little bit of green there, so don't go up using loads. It's just as, I'm using it as a dollar. Tiny bit of blue. So black, crimson, and a tiny bit of blue. Now, where the waterfall's gonna be? I'm just gonna do it in my mind first, dark. Good way to do it, get, get a bit of practice in. I know where it's gonna go. Just wanna practice. That's the motion that we're gonna want. So now I'm just gonna use that same brush. I'm just going to use titanium white and mix that dark colour with the titanium white first so it goes a lovely, like a, a light lavender colour but it's a, it looks a bit grey as well because of the black that's in it. So just over here, I'm just going to come along and down. There, see that? Because this waterfall it's quite a decent size. Maybe even bring it a bit further. See, we're going to chop it off as well at one point. There. Something like that is going to go. Step back. Is that going to be big enough? I think I need it to drop just a tiny bit more. So I can just again come over. And just like drop just that smidgen more. So that side. But you need to make sure you come straight down with this. Straight down. There. I'm gonna chop it off somewhere like there. So now I'm just gonna put that brush down. I'm gonna get a clean one inch brush. Just like a good one for it. And then I'm just going to get straight titanium white on this brush, but I'm getting a lot of colour. You can see how much colour there is, that's plenty there. And then you just pull through it, so then you don't end up with too much on your brush, just like so. And then with that colour, you just come in. And let it drop. Just like that. Perfect. Again. Love it. Now I want it to get slightly wider just at the base. There. See how just at the base. Now I know that we've got another little one coming from up here, so I'm just going to use the side of the brush. There. A little drop to that. That's lovely. Step back, have a good look. I'm happy with that. Lovely torrent going over there, isn't it? Right, so I'm just gonna you go back to my filler brush, and then I'm gonna use I've got a bit dark on it already. Use sap green. Cadmium yellow, sorry, India uh, lemon yellow. I don't want it to be too garish. I don't want it to be over the top. This colour, you know, with the brightness of it. So I'm just going to use a small amount of black as a dollar at the side, and then put that into it. There, that's perfect. There's quite a lot of paint there, and I've done that for a reason. See how I'm getting rid of the majority. Now I can actually tap. Because it's the dark on the brush, you'll see it coming out there. So I'll tap and I'll push and get a ridge of pin. And that's what lives out there on the palette. And then, jump in here, start painting in some of these little trees and highlighting them. Turning them into little individuals. Keep 
tapping up into this green because as you go in, you'll pick up that base colour, you know, that I put on at first. <coughs> so you just reload, make sure your bristles are open. And then you can just highlight it, no problem. I'm going to come a bit higher there so it looks brighter, just on the top. That's it. Nice. And then it goes off down in the shadows. Maybe another little one there. I like to work on these trees as little individuals. Treat them like individuals. don't want to do that everywhere with that same colour. So what I do is I'll move on a bit and then say we'll do these that are in this corner. Again I'll reload. See how the darks are so important now though. That's how you keep the shadows. Maybe Bit of yellowy colour up on there. Nice. Loads of little individuals. One down there, leave that one dark up there. And just straight dark. When you put the brush in, just tap at the base of it like so. And then we'll just change the colour slightly. Put more yellow, Indian yellow. Just there. Uh, more to the Indian yellow side, this one. So, we'll put a brush in a bit. Come in front of that one. Just in there. So you're just changing that colour tone. Straighten a bit of yellow off right now. Leave them shadows behind, uh, underneath the base. Don't kill all them. Now again, into the Indian yellow. All different shapes and sizes. Nature is very irregular. If you're too repetitious when you're painting trees, they just don't look natural. And people always ask me, why, why are they not looking natural on there? And usually, that's the one. Either they've killed all the dark, and there's no dark left so that the highlights don't stand out, or Oh, they've actually tapped it in too much and mixed it with the base coat and wood mixing as we like to say which is very easy to do but by keeping it clean like this as you can see it's really easy to highlight these trees because we've already got the black on underneath it means you don't need a lot of oil paint on you know dark oil paint therefore you're not picking up much on your brush when you're actually painting like I am now Sign it off all. Loads of little trees. Some of them want to be slightly brighter than the others. And then put some in a bit darker. Just on the edges, brighten that up. We have a bit more yellow walker. Just up there needs it, just on the top. That's it. Same on that. I want to put a bit more yellow walker just. 
just in there. I really enjoy doing this. This layering is so much fun. It really is. See, I've left all them in shadows, and then you put some bright ones in between. It's a nice thing. 